So I'm going to switch now to our LST user channel because it has a number of videos included in it and that'll give us a more robust learning platform now. I wanted to use a brand new YouTube account to show you how to get that first video in, but now we'll switch over so we can see how a channel looks with increased content on it. So I've come up here and I've switched the account from the previous, which was the SST user account. And now you can see by the check mark that I'm on the learning support teacher account. So you, just as you can switch back and forth in other Google platforms between your personal and your school one, you can see on here that I switched between accounts as well. So I'm going to come over to the learning support teacher one, which we are already on. And what I'm seeing here is just some random things that YouTube is presenting to me. Perhaps they're trending today a little bit, or they may be based on some other stuff. Some of it looks very, very random. If I want to see my own stuff, I'm going to come under here and I'm going to go to this link called Your Channel. And when I do that, it's going to switch my screen to have the videos that we have posted to our learning support teacher account. And so I'm on the home page. This should be in more or less reverse chronological order. We haven't done a lot of customizing of this channel because by and large, we are just housing videos here to embed them into learning modules or slides, presentations, that type thing. Because having your videos housed on YouTube really does make it easier to bring them into presentations and other things. There's just something about the YouTube system that makes it fairly seamless in terms of video usage. So the homepage should be just the most recently added ones. When I go into videos, I'm going to see some additional content here. So I see the reverse chronological order. We can see that our wonderful Sandy has been doing lots of mathematics stuff during this quarantine time. And if we just keep going down, we're going to get into some of the older stuff. And some of these are part of, you know, here's a MIPI tutorial that's in the MIPI modules and a Google Meet one that's in that one. So we do have a fair bit of content in here. And at any point in time, we can come in and we can edit one of these videos. So I'm going to just open this one because it's one of mine. And I'll just pause it so that the um, audio isn't coming across as well. Now I can look into analytics, which is not what we're going to concern ourselves with this early in the process, but I can go into the edit video space. And if I've made a typo or if I've got a better thumbnail now that I want to use, you see how we can get right back to that same type screen that we had when we were doing the original upload. And again, I note if it is made for kids or not made for kids. And this, this purpose of this one is for teacher training. So I've stated that no, it's not made for kids. Um, certainly we can use the if then feature in forms for some wonderfully robust assignments. But this particular video was created with an adult audience in mind. Now I can go into the analytics on it and I can see some things, but I think we've got a, vi a better video for looking at that. All I wanted to show you with this quick little video tutorial here was just how to get to your channel, click on your profile and just make sure you're looking at your channel so you're not seeing a random smattering of things that have nothing to do with you. And then you can go in into the videos list and if you need to make an edit, you can see all of them if you just click on any of them because you're in the account that owns the videos, you can click on any of them and do a quick edit to them as well. So we'll take a look at some of the analytics in the next video and that gets into a little bit more points of interest perhaps.